Tell me you're a perfume hoarder without telling me you're a perfume hoarder. I'll go first. Hello everyone, welcome back to Jus de Rose. On this channel we talk about fragrances and today's video is a bit of an unusual one. It is a perfume declutter. What does this mean? I will be getting rid of 50 fragrances within my perfume collection. What? I know, it is a lot of perfumes, but unfortunately, I just don't seem to be reaching out for these as much as I should. And I find that, you know, maybe someone else would enjoy these perfumes more than I would, and it's just a shame that they're sitting in my collection not getting used. I have a mix of designer and niche and some more affordable perfumes. Some of these were blind buys, and unfortunately, didn't work out for me. Not saying they're bad fragrances, but they're just perfumes that either didn't work well with my skin or that I just didn't like the way they smelt overall. So that is why I will be parting ways with these perfumes. The first one is Bronze Goddess Eau de Parfum from Estee Lauder. Now this is a more concentrated version of uh, the original Bronze Goddess, which I have in my collection and I adore. It's a solar coconutty fragrance with like really opulent florals. It basically smells like being at the beach on holiday. It's all you want to smell like in the summertime. Personally, that's how I feel. But with the Eau de Parfum, I just think it's a little bit sticky. It's too sweet for my taste and I wouldn't want to wear this in the summertime when it's very hot outside. I think it's just a little bit too much. Maybe if you like your gourmand fragrances and you love vanilla and something that is a little richer, you'll probably really enjoy this. But for me, the Bronze Goddess Eau de Parfum isn't gonna stay in my collection. Next, we have a perfume that I bought for a video. It is Armani Code for Women. It's nice, but it's nothing that is exceptional or groundbreaking. And I just don't find my scent, my scent myself reaching out for this perfume as much as I should. So essentially, this perfume is, I've only sprayed it like twice, so it's pretty new, which is a bit of a shame. Next up, we have an affordable fragrance, super affordable, Lalique pour Homme. This has like a gorgeous bottle, oh, it's amazing. You have like a lion's head, um, which is engraved in the glass. It is beautiful. And to be fair, it is a good, solid cheapy for men, but for me, I find the fragrance to be a little bit too classic, traditional. It is a nice, like fresh, fougère, barber shop type of fragrance, but I just don't really like <laughs> to smell this on my partner. So that is why I'm getting rid of it. Jo Malone limited edition fragrance. It is called Wild Strawberry and Parsley. This was a collection that was inspired by herbs and the garden. Came out a few years ago, so you can't find it anymore and it's a really interesting scent. You smell a lot of strawberry, there's some green notes, it's watery, it's fresh, and it's great for spring, but it's not one that, I don't know, I reach out for the most within my Jo Malone collection, and I have quite a few Jo Malone fragrances as well, so I don't see myself using this anytime soon. If you love gourmand fragrances, and I have recommended this perfume before, it is Salt Caramel by Shane Blue. This smells delicious. Like if you love gourmands and you love caramel and vanilla, this is a beast of a fragrance. It will last all day on your skin. Insane performance. The projection is insane and that is part of the problem for me is that you really have to dose the spray on this perfume because it can get a little bit sickly. The next perfume is one that is from Paco Rabanne. It is called Fabulous Me and this is part of the pack collection. I just want to point out the packaging. This is the sickest packaging I've ever seen. It's like an unbreakable packaging. So you can literally throw your fragrance on the ground and it won't shatter because it isn't made of glass. It's made of this material that is like cushion-like almost, like plasticky, cushion-y. I don't really know what it is, but it's very cool and I love the metallic finish. Now, what about the fragrance? And this is where for me it doesn't work. It's a really unusual perfume. So if you think about Paco Rabanne, you think about One Million, about Invictus, Olympia, so fragrances that are very mass appealing. But with Pack Collection, the perfumes are intended to be unisex and the, 
they're so unusual in terms of the fragrances. They're very niche-like in that sense, like very daring in the olfactive expression. And certainly, Fabulous Meat is just like that. So there is some unusual notes like rhubarb, as well as pumpkin. So it's really strange, it's a bit sweet, it's a bit green and fruity and tangy from the rhubarb, but unfortunately it just doesn't work on my skin. Then we have a super safe fragrance, it is Rosa Galore by Attar Collection. They actually sent me this fragrance um, to test and try, and it's a nice perfume based around rose. It's like a rosy, musk, musky perfume type of thing but it's not anything that is crazy groundbreaking and I already have rose fragrances similar to this in my collection, so I don't need to have an extra one. But the packaging is really cute. Navitus Parfum, Intimus. Uh, this one, I really enjoyed at first, but it's not one that I, you know, gravitate towards anymore. Um, I don't like the way that it dries down on my skin. There's, some, there's a note that bothers me. It dries down quite powdery as well, and I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. The next fragrance is super affordable. It is a celebrity perfume, Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. Now, this perfume to me just falls flat. It is very simplistic. I find it to be a little bit old-fashioned as well, like a 90s feminine floral vibe I get from this scent. And it's just not one that I reach out for. It's, it's okay. It's not the best celebrity fragrance out there. I recommend other perfumes. If you want an affordable fragrance, you should go for Stash, which sadly I will also be parting with. This one, and it's well known in the community for being a very daring celebrity scent. It's more on the niche side. So when I say it's more on the niche side, it's an olfactive expression that is very unique that uses a mix of ingredients that you wouldn't typically find in like your celebrity or designer fragrances. So with Stash, it's a woody, ambery, spicy, incense-like type of fragrance. It's so unusual, but the mix of ingredients is not something that I gravitate towards. So I don't like perfumes that are like too ambery, incense-y, that kind of direction is just not my vibe, but I'm sure if you like those type of fragrances within that olfactive realm, you'll probably love Stash, and it's super affordable, great quality celeb perfume. The next one is extremely controversial, and I've had a lot of hates for a review that I did on this fragrance because I just don't think it's really worth it. It's Dunhill Icon. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance. It's not, it's just okay. For me, the performance is really not that great and I just don't think it is an interesting enough fragrance in my collection for me to keep it. Next, we have a Tom Ford fragrance. It is Velvet Orchid. Basically, I got this perfume because I smelt it on someone and I just loved the way it smelt on her. Beautiful sillage, like it just, it was incredible, so I was like, I need to get it for myself. And then I wore it, and I wasn't getting the same effect, which is such a shame. And to me, this perfume has more of a, um, in French you would say, pâte à modeler. I don't know how to say that in English. Play-Doh, that is the word. It has almost like a Play-Doh smell, which is so weird, and I wish I couldn't smell that, but that's all I can smell in this fragrance. So yeah, it doesn't work for me. Then we have a niche perfume from Juliet Has A Gun, Lipstick Fever. I have recommended this fragrance quite a bit actually on my channel um, and on Instagram. It's a very pretty floral fruity scent, super easy going. There's some raspberry, some iris, some musk. It's very pretty and playful, youthful, a joyful scent. Not one that I usually reach out for. I'm very rarely into your very pure floral fruity fragrances, so this perfume just isn't for me, but the dry down is super nice. A perfume by Philosophy, this is Pure Grace. This one, I've sprayed it like once as well, so it's really new, and 
The reason why I'm not keeping it is because I used to have a fragrance from Philosophy many years ago when I was at university that I loved so much but I couldn't remember the name of it and so I blind bought this thinking it was that fragrance but it's not. So that was a bit of a disappointment. But if you're looking for like a clean, fresh, musky perfume that is inoffensive, you know, that will uplift your mood, this is a great one to get. Let's dive back into the designer realm with Hugo Boss, the scent Private Accord for her. I also bought this perfume for another YouTube video and I just, I just don't reach for it. It's too sweet, it turns very sickly sweet on my skin. This I've described as being a blend of pink sugar by Aquilina, so this like really sweet cotton candy scent blended with orangette or like chocolate covered oranges. So it sounds really delicious, but over time it just becomes too sickly sweet on my skin. Floral Street, it's called Ylang Ylang Espresso. This basically smells like a terrace in summer in Paris. So like you're on an outdoor terrace in Paris, you're eating tiramisu and there's like people smoking outside because like people in Paris, they tend to smoke on terraces, etc. And that is basically what this fragrance smells like. It's sweet, you have an element of this like smokiness, like, yeah, like a bit of like a cigarette smokiness. And you have this really lovely like tiramisu accord, coffee accord in the scent. It's quite sensual, it's quite bold and daring. If you are a coffee lover, I highly recommend you try this perfume out because it's extremely loud but for me it's a no. I think we are almost halfway through it so I will speed it up for the second half and I have quite a few Navitus Parfum fragrances here. So first up we have Verve Matin. This is a collaboration with Buck from Big Beer Business and Navitus Parfum. This perfume I really enjoyed initially. I have to say it's nice. It's like your Swiss army knife type of perfume. It does it all, very easy to wear, but it's a scent that, you know, it's a good DNA, but I have fragrances within my perfume collection that I just enjoy to wear a little bit more or that I enjoy to smell on my partner a little bit more as well. Then we have Elation, also the same collaboration. This one is more sensual than Verve Matin. It's more masculine leaning as well. Super nice, got nothing to say, but I just, don't, me personally, I don't wear it and my partner doesn't wear it either, so I will part ways. Next up, we have Virtus, also by Navitus. This is a fragrance that is around tobacco. It's warm, it's sweet, uh, and to be fair, it is a really nice tobacco scent, but I have, again, other ones in my collection that I just reach out for more. And finally, the other two I have from Navitus is Lautus. This one I didn't particularly like from the range, which is why it's going. And then Opulentas, uh, this is the travel spray and I kept the full size bottle so I don't need to have the travel spray. You may be a little bit surprised with this next fragrance because I just released a review on it. It is the new perfume, masculine perfume from Hermes H24. This is a huge deal for Hermes as well since the last masculine launch was Terre d'Hermes, which was a major success. But I personally don't like H24. It's not my style of perfumes. I don't find it sexy on a man. I don't like smelling it either. It's not my style. So that's why this is going and my partner will not be wearing this either. The next one is uh, Bulgari Glacial Essence on the blotter. It smelled amazing. It was beautiful. You have some ginger, there's some woods and it smells clean and it's like a really easy going fragrance, but on skin, totally different. When I was testing it on my skin and I also asked my partner to wear this because obviously this is a men's fragrance, it just smelled really cheap. It smelled like, you know, a shower gel from like Adidas or like Axe or something that had nothing to do with what I had smelled on the blotter. So this is going. I have three lush fragrances. I love the body products, I love the bath bombs, the creams, but when it comes to perfume, I just don't layer with the fragrance. The first one is Rose Jam, and the body butter I adore. I can't get enough of the scent, but I don't know, I just don't like spraying it on my skin. It smells great, it's a really lovely, sweet, rose fragrance that is extremely unusual. If you like rose scents, 
I, I recommend you you check out Rose Jam. It's super nice, um, but it's not one that I wear that much. Next up, we have 1000 Kisses Deep, a really beautiful, like floral, warm fragrance uh, that, you know, if you like florals, check that one out. And then we finally have Confetti. This is a really playful, fun, almond to pear type of scent. Very unique. I think there's violet leaf in here. You get like a light leathery, very, very light leathery note from here. It's predominantly pear and a little bit of sweetness from the almond. Super interesting scent. Let's talk about a few blind buys that have gone wrong. The first one is Heat Wave by Prada. When I was looking at the notes on Fragrantica, I'm like, yes, this is everything that I like sensual, exotic florals with like a sweeter amber base. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna love it. I loved it on paper and I loved it on like in the air when I just sprayed it like this. It smells amazing. I think that you have like Ylang Ylang, there's jasmine, the florals are really fleshy and ultra sensual. My skin does not work. That is why I'm getting rid of it. Real shame though. The next blind buy, is, well, to be fair, it's not a blind buy because I did smell it a while ago. Um, again, on paper and not on my skin, which is the error that I made. It is Tea for Two by L'Artisan Parfumeur. This fragrance is a tea scent that literally smells like dark black tea, no milk, but with a slice of lemon. It is really intense. And this is one that is like beast mode style. Like it will stay, at least on my skin, it stays all day. It just smelt too strong, too opulent, and yeah, I just didn't like the way it sat on my skin. The next one is also from L'Artisan Parfumeur. Now this was purely a blind buy because I didn't smell it. It's Bois Farine Eau de Toilette. It smells, it's meant to smell, I think, like cereal, like oats, something like that. And I was like, ooh, this is nice, something maybe a bit creamy, but it didn't turn out that way, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, it turned out very different. It's a little bit green here, a bit powdery. It's not in the creamy gourmand type of way. It's more powdery, dry cereals, which I just don't like. Next up, we have a fragrance by Carolina Herrera. This is uh, Carolina Herrera Privé. Love the packaging, super cute with the bow, but this perfume just turns way too sweet on my skin. A little bit generic as well, so yeah, not for me. Molecule 4 by Centric Molecules. This is based around the notes of sandalwood, which if you love sandalwood, this one is probably for you. But I just don't seem to be reaching out for it as much as I should, even though I love sandalwood. Then we have two Guerlain fragrances, the original Mont Guerlain and Mont Guerlain Eau de Toilette. So Mont Guerlain to me is too sweet, I just don't use it. I would recommend it to you if you love gourmand fragrances but you want something that's a little bit more uplifting because it has a fresh lavender note in here. Go for it but I just don't use it in my collection and I feel that someone else would probably enjoy it more than I would. And then we have the Eau de Toilette. I actually prefer the Eau de Toilette to the original fragrance because it's fresher. You have the addition of mandarin. The lavender is enhanced as well in the scent. It's bright uh, and sweet still easy going, great fragrance to transition between like summer and autumn, that kind of transition period, I would recommend this perfume. Next up, we have a Zara perfume. It is from the Tobacco Collection, intense, dark and exclusive. This one compared to Rich, Warm and Addictive is just not as good and I decided to keep Rich, Warm and Addictive instead. Gucci Bloom Aqua di Fiori by Gucci. So this bottle is beautiful. I love the packaging. Really pretty scent to be fair. I love the original as well. Very green. It smells like a garden in spring. You have beautiful florals. They're transparent with some jasmine, some tuberose. And you also have a very distinct green note that is mixed with berries. So it's as if you were picking berries during the springtime surrounded by flowers and like, you know, the soil is wet. A little bit it's 
a refreshing floral fragrance, but not one that I reach out for anymore, which is a bit sad because I used to love it. Two more Jo Malone fragrances, or actually no, three Jo Malone perfumes. This one is Nashi Blossom. It was a limited edition because you can see the packaging is a little bit different. Uh, smells great, fresh, floral, uh, fruity as well with a little bit of that pear note. Great perfume, but I have other perfumes that I use more in Jo Malone. And then we have Basil and Neroli and Blue Agava and Cacao. Now, if you'd like Blue Agava, Blue Agava and Cacao, DM me on Instagram because I know this is extremely difficult to find and I'm more than willing to part ways with this scent. We have 12 more fragrances, so almost done. And I'll begin with Juicy Couture Gold. And you're probably like, why is this in your collection? Well, I bought it for a video and I never wear it and will never wear this fragrance. It is not my style. I find it smells super cheap and synthetic. It's sweet, I'm just, it's just not me. It smells like a teenager, maybe teenagers like this, but for me, I'm, I'm never buying this again. We have another niche fragrance. Juliet has a gun, Musque Invisible. This is one of their newest releases actually, and it smells good. It smells very musky as you would expect. To me, this reminds me of Elnet Hairspray, which I love the scent like that on my hair, but I wouldn't necessarily wear it. Um, if you're a fan of musk, check out Musque Invisible. Ex Idolo Lucid Dream. This is a very pretty, sensual, spicy rose. And actually, I think the concentration of ingredients in here is quite high because when I spray it on my skin, my the back of my hand, for example, gets very shiny. Uh, so that's why I think the concentration is super high. Lovely rose perfume, good quality. I have nothing to say other than the fact that I have similar rose fragrances I prefer in my collection. Halfetti Leather by Penhaligans. This is the flanker of Halfetti. And to me, it just isn't, isn't as good as the original Halfetti, which I adore. I think it's a wonderful, super sexy oriental fragrance. It's very loud. Luxurious smelling, amazing. Halfetti leather turns very powdery on my skin after a while, which I just don't like, so I prefer the original. Then we have another Navitus, Arcanum. Uh, this one I have recommended in the past. It is, you know, warm and woodsy and almost tobacco like as well, but it's not one that I wear as often as I should. Lum by Emmanuel Ungaro. This is the baby of Diorum and Valentino Humo Intense. If those two fragrances had a baby, this would be it. Plus a really fun, playful note of peach. So it's extremely powdery, fresh, and has the same vibe going on as Valentino Humo and Diorum Intense with that peachy note, also sexy and affordable. The final niche perfume, it is Parle-moi de Parfum Guimauve de Noël. This is a bit of a bittersweet separation just because I have other fragrances in my collection that are so similar to this. It's a great scent, guys. Like If you love Neroli slash Orange Blossom with sweet kick around that, you will love Guimauve de Noël. It's Orange Blossom sprinkled with icing sugar. It is beautiful and sweet and floral and is very comforting at the same time. We have another celebrity fragrance. This time it is from Elizabeth and James, Nirvana. I have Nirvana Bourbon in my collection, which is a great, spicy, boozy vanilla, like amazing vanilla, 100% recommend. And when I smell this one after, it almost fell flat compared to Nirvana Bourbon. Four more fragrances to go. We have Jasmine Mask by Al Musba. This is one of my friends' brands, actually. She's based um, in Saudi Arabia. And I believe this perfume is sold in the Middle East. I don't know if they ship to the US yet. Um, but this is a really nice jasmine, musky perfume, great everyday scent for women. Unfortunately, I've had this for a while and I think it's gone bad, which is why I'm getting rid of, rid of it. Next, we have Manifesto by Yves Saint Laurent. 
used to love this perfume back in the day when I was like a teenager and I thought I would still love it now but this is another one that is just overly sweet and I just don't like it on my skin. Yup, um, parting ways with this, my partner doesn't wear it, I like it on the blotter, I don't like it as much on the skin so this is going. And finally, Alive by Hugo Boss. This is the newest release from the brand. It smells really nice on the blotter. It's like a more refined version of CH Good Girl. So similar kind of notes thing going on. But again, on my skin, it develops a really, really overly sweet, sickly sweet character, which I dislike. So there you have it, 50 perfumes that I will be parting with in my collection, making room for more perfumes to come. I hope you enjoyed this video, very different to what I usually do. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these fragrances, if you still have them in your collection, or if you don't. I always like to know. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, spread the fragrant love.